Obviously, Jane and I are honored to have been invited by the President and Mrs. Obama to be their guest at the State of the Union address tonight. And we're also excited because Kentucky is going to be recognized nationally for the success it's had in providing affordable health care for all of its people for the first time in Kentucky's history. Governor, talk about how the invitation came about. How did you hear? When did you hear? Et cetera. We got a call from the White House last Thursday afternoon from Valerie Jarrett, who is the president's senior advisor, issuing the invitation and, and saying that the president wanted to honor Kentucky because of the success that we've had in implementing the Affordable Care Act. What hope do you, do you have that this would do for both the effort here in Kentucky as well as for the state overall? Certainly, we've been having great success here in Kentucky. Actually, we've got the national model for success in implementing the Affordable Care Act. You know, when we began on October 1, our website and our call lines were flooded with Kentuckians eager to find out about getting affordable care. And since then, we started signing up folks at about 1,000 people per day. Well, we've signed up uh, 182,000 people so far in four months and that rate per day has gone up to 1,500 people per day. So that just shows you the pent up demand that Kentuckians have for affordable health care here in Kentucky. And regarding the attention to the state itself, just to have a, a, a sitting governor uh, at the State of the Union? Well, obviously Kentucky being a shining light and a leader in this nation in providing health care also gives me an opportunity in a national stage to talk about the other things that Kentucky is leading on, like in education and education reform, the fact that we were the first state to adopt the Common Core standards, the second state to adopt the next generation science standards. We have raised our dropout age from 16 to 18. We just got a $44 million race to the top early childhood grant and we're expanding early childhood in Kentucky now. You know, those kinds of things America needs to know, the world needs to know because Kentucky's a progressive place to be, and we want to attract people from all over the world to come here, create jobs, and do business with us. Let me ask the opposite end of that question. Might it hurt politically, you and by extension Democrats, to be so connected visibly with the president? You know, if the president were a Republican, I would be going to Washington, D.C. Uh, to be honored and for Kentucky to be honored for the efforts that we're making for our people on affordable health care. This is not political as far as I'm concerned. You know, this, this is a Kentucky governor going to accept an honor for Kentucky of doing some great things for its people. In, in the same vein, however, if I could follow up, obviously you know that uh, Secretary Grimes in her Senate race is, has tried to distance herself, at least in some respects, from Obamacare and needing to be fixed, as well as from the president overall, given his popularity or lack thereof in Kentucky. Is there, what do you think the political implications are here as a result of you going? I think by November of this year, the whole affordable health care issue is going to be a very different issue than it was even last November. Because first of all, 80% of Kentuckians and Americans aren't even affected by the Affordable Care Act. And by this coming November, they're going to know that they're not affected. Right now, with all the misinformation out there, they're confused just like everybody else is. So next November, 80% of Kentuckians will know that it doesn't affect them, and so it won't be an issue for them. And a good part of the other 20% are going to be covered either by expanded Medicaid or by a qualified health plan, and they're going to like very much what they're getting uh, for the dollars that they pay. So. I think by next November, this will be a positive issue for those that support it. What's the schedule going to be? When do you leave and arrive? And uh, will you get a chance to meet the president personally? Jane and I will be arriving at the White House around five o'clock. I understand that there will be a reception for not only ourselves, but other guests of the president and first lady. I am sure that at some point uh, between then and even after the speech, we will have an opportunity to visit with both the President and the First Lady, and I'm looking forward to it. What are your personal feelings, just as a, as a Kentuckian, as a, as a human being, being you know, seated in that position and being recognized nationally and internationally? 
Well, obviously, I, I never anticipated that Jane and I would receive an honor like this. I mean, it's an honor, no matter who's president of the United States, to be invited to sit with the First Lady of the United States and listen to a president deliver a State of the Union address. Uh, it's an honor that I never expected, uh, but we're both thrilled with it. And finally, if I could, I, a couple of years ago in your State of the Commonwealth, I, I believe, was when you used that line to, to the President to you know, get off our backs when it comes to the, the EPA. Do you have an opportunity to address any issues like that with him? Do you, if you do have the opportunity, do you think you will? I'm sure that from time to time, just as I've done in the past, I will be able to talk with the President about a number of issues that affect Kentucky. You know, I've talked to the White House on a number of occasions about getting a race to the top grant, you know, for our, our children at, at an early age, about a lot of different things like that that Kentucky needs. And, you know, things are starting to come around uh, out of Washington for Kentucky. Look at what we're getting for Eastern Kentucky right now with the Promise Zone designation, with the Strike Force initiative that is going on. You know, it's, it's exciting how finally we are getting noticed uh, by Washington, D.C. in terms of all the good things that are happening here in Kentucky, and we're starting to get some support for it. I do one final follow-up, and that is on that note, I'm just curious, do you think that there is a tangible payoff for the state by you, if people said you stuck your neck out for the president, you've become a national spokesman for the Health Care Act and for what it's done for Kentucky. Is there any kind of quid pro quo, not necessarily uh, officially, but are we getting anything in return for you sticking your neck out the way you have? Certainly, I think that Kentucky has benefited from us stepping up and being the model for success for the Affordable Care Act. You know, we're doing it because our people need this but it's also giving us national recognition, and I, I'm sure we are much more on the minds of those in the White House and in this administration because we've been there and doing the kinds of things that show that this act, this Affordable Care Act, can be a success in this country.